Welcome to the Block Party with Seth Kushner. My guest today, Mitchell Stevens. Welcome to the show, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Dude, so let's go. I mean, so we got hockey, you know, kind of going back on now. Tell me, uh, are you back skating? Who are you skating with? And how excited are you to get back out on the ice? Yeah, um, super excited for sure. Uh, yeah, we're back uh, in our groups, uh, skating and working out at the rink. So it's uh, my groups, Rally, Joseph, Pointer, Gordo, and uh, Verhege. So, what, I mean, since there's no coaches that are allowed there, what, I mean, do you put yourselves through drills? Are you guys just messing around? I mean, what, what, what do you do since there's not allowed to be any coaches watching you guys? Yeah, we just <laughs> play it by ear, I guess. Yeah, we come up with our drills and uh, try to get a good skate in, uh, get the lungs back, get the legs back. And, um, I mean, most of us probably haven't uh, stick handled or shot a puck in however long. So, it's, you know, definitely getting that skill back for sure. How excited are you to get back out there? And, I mean, did you think there was a chance that there wouldn't be a season? Well, yeah, there was – I think there was a chance for sure, uh, just with the uh, the pandemic and uh, the overall safety of everyone. But, um, you know, just to, to be back in the ice with the guys and, uh, you know, mess around on the ice, get some skill work done, and uh, just to, you know, be with them for sure. It's exciting. Hey, does Sorelli ever text you back? Because I was he was on the block party last week, and I was trying to coordinate with him, and uh, he would only get me back like every four or five texts. So, and you guys used to be roommates, right? Yeah, we used to be roommates. Is, but, he, uh, is it just was it just me, or is he bad on getting back to people? He is bad. Okay, <laughs> he does take a while for sure. <laughs> um, I want so I want to know. Tell me what it was like. Tell me about the experience because we've had a lot of guys on the podcast here. You know, a lot of guys that have been traded, but I, I haven't been able to get a story from somebody that got called up. You know, tell me what that whole process was like for you from you know when you got the call to you know when you arrived at the arena. Yeah, um, well, it was a quick quick turnaround for for the most part I got got the call on Sunday uh to come to get called up obviously super excited but did you see uh, it I come got, in I didn't at all no I didn't um I was just you know trying to play good hockey down in Syracuse and you know obviously hope for the best but uh, I'm not gonna lie you still seem kind of shocked <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean this you know I try to try to go into every day like it could be my last so I mean uh, when I first got the call I was you know super excited obviously in shock but I got on a plane and you know I think going to the rink in the morning I think we were playing uh, the Islanders um, I thought the the most nerve-wracking thing was the morning skate morning skate with all the guys new guys and you know you trying to want to make a first good impression with them right um you know but cool? after that, were they cool oh, yeah. like okay. yeah they were all cool they're all you know excited for me uh you know pumped that I was up there so is it like uh, that moment you know when you get there is it like that where we have we all have that dream where we're all we all show up to school naked is it like one of those moments <laughs> where you're like I'm here but I don't know if I should be here because like there's Kucherov and there's Stamkos and there's Hedman and and here I am does it feel like it's one of those things or you feel like you belong no. yeah you sort of you want to feel like you belong. And I think you know, I've been in the organization for five years since I've been drafted. And then the three years that I played pro. So um, I've got to know all these guys through the camps and um, the one year I was black acing and uh, I lived with Shirelli and I played with all these guys too. Right. So, um, you know, there's familiarity in that sense, but it was, you know, obviously it was just, it was a higher stage for sure. Absolutely. So uh, what do they do? Do they put you up in like a hotel that night kind of thing? Like, or what do you do when you, you first get into town and you get called up? Cause someone's got to yeah. set all that stuff up for you. Right. Yeah. They, they put me up at the, the hotel there and, um, you know, pretty much just told us what time to, to be at the rink the next day. And, and that was about it. So I was, it's, it doesn't vary game days from the American league to the NHL. It's, you know, pretty standard across the board, but, um, you know, I tried to go in as just another hockey game and obviously the nerves and excitement were there, but it was, uh, it was pretty cool. Did they have you lead the team out onto the ice that night? Yeah, they did. Okay. Yeah. Now, 
I yeah. watched that. I watched that video, and I thought they were punking you because you you started walking, and nobody started walking until like you were almost out on the ice. Is that how it normally goes, or were they screwing with you? No, for the most part, yeah, that's how how it goes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Patty Patty took my helmet, so I had to go no no bucket, but no, it was uh, it was cool. That's got to be like a good feeling to stammers like, all right, guy, you know, go ahead and lead us out there. I saw that. That's got to be yeah. something that you're gonna remember forever. Oh, totally. So tell me, so since you got called up this year, tell me, you know, tell me the highest high you've experienced and tell me the lowest low. Uh, probably the highest point was when I scored my first goal um, against Montreal. So that was, that was definitely the highest point uh, of my young career in the NHL, I guess. But Where is that uh, puck, by the way? It is in Peterborough with my dad. Okay. All right, good. Yeah, Cause um, so I give it to my dad, yeah. All right, because I talked to Sorelli last week, and he had a hat trick, and I asked him, you know, where those pucks are, and he said they're at Amelie Arena somewhere. He didn't seem to like <laughs> it was too big of a deal. So I'm glad your first goal means a lot to you. Yeah, yeah, I gave it to my dad. So yeah. I was, you know, just a little token of everything that he's done. And has there been a point this year where you're just like, man, this is uh, this is this is tough for me? You know, I after you score your first goal, and then maybe you go on a streak where you're not scoring. Is there just a thing where you go, I I I, I don't know, maybe maybe I don't belong here? Or you never have those doubts. I wouldn't say that that was ever the case. I think you know, obviously in in games, there's up and downs in games, whether you get scored on or have a couple of bad shifts in a row, but. Uh, for the most part, I, I try to, you know, maintain confidence. Um, but obviously that can quickly <laughs> go the other way <laughs> as this game is crazy as it is. So, Was there a moment this year, like a holy crap moment where you go, I can't believe I'm on the ice, you know, competing against this person? I think it was overtime in Pittsburgh where it was, I think it was a two and a half minute shift. And it was Crosby and Rust and Latang again. And then the next shift was Malkin and whoever. So it was, it was just nonstop in your face. So that was, that was definitely the craziest moment for sure. So tell me about, tell me about the time you spent in Syracuse and, and tell me how much you learned because it's just, it's an absolute factory for the majority of talent that we, you know, have up here and with the, with the main roster right now. Well, for me, the, the last two and a half years have definitely been growing. I did a lot of maturing uh, as a player and, um, you know, sort of finding a, a niche in the, in the American League. And, um, you know, I have to give a lot of credit to, to BG down there. He, he knows how to push players. He knows how to get the best out of players. And um, I don't think I would be where I am without the way that he's – you know, molded me, but, um, you know, I think how do we get the best, how do we get the best out of Mitchell Stevens? How do you respond to like, <laughs> you know, negative stuff, positive stuff, getting called out in front of the whole team, you know, getting called aside and going, Hey, work on this. Like, what do you, what do you respond to? I think I respond to, to everything really. Um, you know, I, when my, when I was growing up, my dad, you know, he was hard on me, but at the end of the day, it was to push me to be better. And I think that, you know, as the careers go on, you're not going to have a coach that's every, every single one similar. So you sort of learn to, um, you know, adjust to the way that they coach and try to, you know, you know, bring yourself up to games and, you know, learn from their feedback. Let me ask you, how good of a guy is Pat Maroon? I had him on the podcast. I thoroughly enjoyed him. He seems like, I mean, he's a wonderful addition for a locker room, especially for you guys. What's it been like for you to be around him and play with him a little bit? Oh, that guy is, he's the ultimate guy's guy. He's, uh, he's a guy that, you know, is a true locker room guy. And, you know, he's just, he's very genuine to, to everyone. You know, if you're a new guy coming up, he was one of the first guys that I that I talked to when I came up. So he was he was very welcoming, and you know, when you get to know him, he's a he's a laughter guy. He loves you know mixing it up with the boys. So it's you know, he's a great addition. What does it feel like, kind of going into the playoffs with him, knowing that you know he was part of a team that won the cup last year? Well, he's he's been there. He knows how how it goes, the road there. 
um, he's got that experience. So I think, you know, when he, when he talks, you, you sort of listen because he's been there. So it's, um, he's, he's one of those guys that, you know, went through the dog days and, you know, that long series, couple game sevens, and mm-hmm. uh, he found a way to win. So those are, those are the type of guys you listen to. Now, I keep referencing this, but I know that you're buddies with Sorelli. So I had him on, and when I, I was going through Sorelli's Instagram, and I was looking at his family, and his dad looked like the kind of guy that would, like, choke out a referee or choke out a coach <laughs> or an opposing player. And Sorelli seemed to say that his dad was a little bit more calm. His dad seemed to yell more at Anthony, I think, than anybody else. So you said your dad was hard on you. Would he ever yell at hockey referees or coaches, or he just, he just was kind of would yell at you when there were issues? <laughs> well, a little bit of both, actually. <laughs> he was, uh, he coached me for the longest time. And uh, there's been some choice language, though, going to the refs for sure. But um, no, definitely uh, most so are at me. Uh, listen, dude, tell me, uh, I want to know, because I've actually, I'm on the radio, I'm heard in Peterborough, so I had a question from Peterborough, they want to know, <laughs> well, what's your favorite spot to eat when you're, when you're actually in Peterborough? Wow, okay. Um, I mean, if you got a couple, it's all good. My favorite spot to eat in Peterborough. I like Gertie's, Gertie's okay. a good spot. Um... Yeah, you don't I mean, eat in Peterborough, do you? Not really. No, I haven't. Li- I didn't live there last summer, but uh, <laughs> man, that's tough. You know I what? Back, I haven't been back in Peterborough since maybe August. Yeah, so I don't know. Hey, you know what? Screw Peterborough. Then we don't even need to worry, <laughs> we don't even need to worry about. Where's your favorite spot to go in Tampa? Uh, I like Green Lemon. Okay. Yeah. Um, See a big much sushi fa- guy. Big sushi guy, so I, I like all that stuff. There you go. Much faster answer when I'm asking yeah, you about yeah, Tampa exactly. and Peterborough. I should have never – you know you know what I did on Instagram? I go, hey, anybody got a question for Mitchell Stevens? And then someone's like, oh, yeah, great place to eat in Peterborough. I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. I'll ask a Peterborough question. You know what? That sucked. That's why I'm not taking <laughs> any more listener questions. Um, uh, uh, tell, me, tell me about the fame uh, of, of Leo Stevens. I, I, Leo Stevens oh, seems yeah. to be, you know, taking off during this quarantine. Yeah. That guy, uh, yeah, we got him. Uh, we got him in November, in when we were in Syracuse, he uh, we got him just outside of Belleville, uh, about an hour we're from where I'm from. But uh, yeah, he's uh, he's grown huge. So we got him. I think he was like eight pounds when we got him. Now he's like fifty four pounds. Woo! And, oh, he's gonna be a big boy. And what kind of dog is he? He's a golden doodle. Golden Doodle. Okay, wow, yeah. fifty-four pounds, and he's gonna get bigger. I think he'll roughly stay around there, but uh, yeah, it'll, we'll see. How did he deal with uh, you know the lightning? We're tweeting about him getting him out there in front of all their followers. Has has he developed an ego or anything, or has he kind of stayed you know remained the same, very humble? I think very very humble for sure. Okay, yeah, all right. he, uh, his personality is he's he's got a good personality on him. Okay. I don't know if he's doing any interviews or anything like this while you're doing some. He's zooming some dog sites or anything. So no, he's, he's got to get his Instagram going again. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I had an Instagram for my pet, so I, I got I got no problem with that. Uh, tell me, what is I, I saw a video that you did uh, down in Syracuse with uh, Matthew Joseph. It was some sort of karaoke battle. <laughs> yeah, it, it seemed like it was a little awkward that they forced you guys to do that. Do you are you a karaoke guy? Do you have a go to karaoke song? I'm an oldies guy. I love the '80s. At any time it's on the radio, it's full blast for me. Uh, like what, like cheesy, cheesy '80s songs, like "Total Eclipse of the Heart" or something no. else. No, no, God, no. <laughs> oh God, okay, sorry. So, I thought we were gonna have a, I thought we were gonna have a moment of bonding there. Okay, scratch that, scratch that. But what's like it? What's an '80s like a Michael Jackson song? No, like I'm more like uh, Billy Joel. Okay, that right. type of vibe, clean. Right. Yeah, that's a good vibe. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I didn't. Uh, sorry, I'm way I'm way older than you, so I started getting caught up. You're are you like what? Twenty three. Yeah, twenty three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, yeah. You know, yeah, I, that's I, all my that's all my parents listened to growing up. So that's all I've 
you know, that's all I like, right? <laughs> Do you get what's the mu- who's playing the music in the locker room before while you guys were uh, while you guys were still active? Who has control over that? Uh, Pally's good on it. Uh, Patty's pretty good too. Don't these guys listen to like uh, a lot of dance, a lot of techno, a lot of foreign, a lot of Scottish techno music and stuff like that? Yeah, techno, rap, hip hop. Okay. With some with a little beat. What would be if you had if they gave you control over the music for the day? What what would you put on? What would be the first song you'd play? Probably would never get control of the, the <laughs> stereo, but <laughs> I don't know. I think I'd just be too nervous to to put on my music that none of the guys would like it. It's a tough room. Is it a tough room to impress musically? Uh, not. I mean, not really. It's just you know, not with my genre. Okay. Uh, what, one last question I want to know. It's a chance for you to bury any of your teammates. Uh, who sleeps the most on your team? Who sleeps the most? Yeah, probably, like who? Probably who Pointer. Sleeping? Pointer, okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a consensus pick. Is that what, like, the guy sleeps all day? I, I don't know. I think so. Okay, that's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. Yeah. So I didn't know if it had changed. So oh, what, yeah. what, what time are you up in the morning? Uh, usually 8 o'clock regularly perfect okay there you go yeah. and pointer's Depends. probably we're taping this right now at like 3 30 pointer might still be sleeping oh uh, probably not this late but i'd give him 11 hey whatever it takes to get him ready for the playoffs you know i'm not gonna be mad at the guy oh, exactly exactly hey mitchell stevens listen man i really appreciate you coming on big fan hope you guys go deep 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 into the playoffs i know it's a weird year but you guys everybody's there it looks like everybody's healthy and uh and i know that you're obviously happy to be a part of it and i appreciate you spending some time with us on the block party today man good luck all right appreciate it thanks very much thanks Mitchell. see you man all right bye.